Mark chapter 14, verse number 42. Jesus is in the garden of Gethsemane. Rise up, let us go. He that betrayeth me is at hand. And immediately, while he yet spake, so Jesus hasn't even finished what we just read in 42. Cometh Judas. You see, no time is too late for Jesus. You can't go before Jesus or God, and you can't come after God or Jesus. It's on God's timing, or you sin. Don't sin. One of the twelve, you, all, that's always said about you. One of the twelve. And with him a great multitude, well, there's a lot of people, with swords and staves. Now, swords and stave is interesting. Because let's look at that word stave, and let's go to the first time, the law of the first time something shows up in the, in the Bible, Exodus. Exodus 25. This is the first time Exodus, uh, first time stave showed up, Exodus 25, 12. Notice it's 12. 12 is the Israel number. And we're looking at the Holy Ark. Thou shalt cast four rings of gold for it. This will be in the corners. Put them in the four corners of it. And two rings shall be on one side of it. And two rings on the other side. And thou shalt make staves. There it is. Of shittim wood. And overlay them gold. Thou shalt put the staves in the rings. By the sides of the ark. That the ark may be born with them. So the ark and the brazen altar, the holy incense altar, and the table have these rings, staves. It's a it's a it's a pole, wooden poles overlaid with gold. And when we come to Mark, these staves have become a weapon. And then you can find them in, in military chronicles. And it's funny that the first time that stave shows up, <coughs> oh, excuse me. that stave shows up it's a weapon against the Lord Jesus Christ. We would we know what sword stands for, the word of God. So what would be used as the word of God and bearing the holy articles show up as the instruments of weapons at Jesus' rest. There's a multitude from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. And he, Judas, that betrayed him, have given him a token, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that is he. It's the middle of the night on the Mount of Olives. There are no street lights, there are no camel lights. They're just lanterns and torches. No flashlights. No high beams. No fluorescence. So what Judas says, here's a group of people, at least 12, 11 disciples and Jesus. Since it's dark and you get the right one, the one I walk up to and kiss, that's him. That same is he. Take him, now watch this, lead him away safely. Now Judas, we'll learn later, betrays Jesus. But I don't know if Judas knows what the plan of the chief priests are. 
Excuse me. Jesus is going to a brutal death of the cross. He's going to be whipped. Why would Judas stay safely? And as soon as he was come, he goes straightway to him and said, Master, Master, and kissed him. And they laid their hands on him and took him. And one of them that stood by drew a sword. Now he didn't get a pencil out. He picked up a sword. Probably one of the Romans. Though when they were opening up a room, they said there were two swords. Jesus says that's enough. We don't know if they carried any of them. Okay. There was a sword there. This person, we're going to look at the other Gospels, and smote a servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. <clears throat> Jesus answered, said to him, Are you come out as against a thief? Many times Jesus used that illustration as he would be the thief. Satan would see him as stealing his people with swords. With staves to take me. They carried the holy articles. They got the holy God right there. I was daily with you in the temple teaching. Try that today in America. Try to go to a temple. Try to go to a church grounds. Any religion and get out there and start preaching the gospel. We did that one time with the Jehovah Witnesses, and the Jehovah Witnesses dared to tell me if I got any closer, they were going to call the police. We stood outside the ground on the sidewalk of a Catholic church, and they said, We dare going to call the police. I said, You want to use my phone? We had in the city here. We had the farmer's market. We were on the public sidewalk. We dared to call the cop. Go ahead. Do it. What if you try to go to a Baptist church and preach the truth? I got rebuked by a Southern Baptist because I sent literature about the King James Bible to the congregation. <clears throat> you can't preach the truth to the churches. You can't tell the pastor the truth. These people hated Jesus, and yet he taught in the temple. And you took me not, but the scriptures must be fulfilled. You didn't take them not because the people were there. The only people that are here now are the high priest side. The only ones there of Jesus right now are our loving. The scriptures might be fulfilled, so reading about the garden, <clears throat> reading what Jesus told them, and they all forsook him and fled. See that? Well, we go up Trying to find it. Verse 27, <clears throat> same chapter. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. All ye shall be offended because of me this night, for it's written, I will smite the shepherd, Zechariah, and the sheep shall be scattered. And we know Peter, oh, not me. I, I won't deny you. Well, guess what? Guess what? Verse 50, they all forsook him. All 11 disciples took off. What about Peter? 
Bye. Even cutting off the ear. And there followed him a certain, now we'll get to this in, in a little bit, a certain young man, you got that? Certain young man. <clears throat> had been linen cloth cast about his naked body. And a young man laid hold on him. <clears throat> so the man grabbed this man. And he left the linen cloth and fled from them naked. So there's this one certain man that runs off naked. Got that? We'll talk about him in a moment. And they led Jesus away to the high priest. And with him were assembled all the chief priests and the elders of the scribes. So that's that. So to get more interest, Matthew 26, we're going to look at all the gospels. Mark is a great gospel for the gospel. I don't run to Matthew. Matthew 26, 47. <clears throat> Matthew 26, 47. While he yet spake, lo, Judas, okay, here he is, Judas, one of the twelve, okay, came with a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and elders of the people. So those people that came with Judas, Matthew, the Jewish gospel writer, tells us those chief priests and elders gave those men to Judas is not a follower of Jesus. Scripture is scripture. Don't go run to, oh, look, we finished Mark chapter 14. Hallelujah, glory to God. And you didn't learn nothing. Now he that betrayed him gave them a sign. Mark said token. It's a sign. Jews require a sign. So the disciples, some of them, the people that are with the high priest and the and the, the, the scribes, they're all, here's a Jewish assembly with Judah. And God is still showing them a sign. Though they're going to betray and, and, and take Jesus to trial, they are still able to be saved. They are still Jewish people. And God says, give him a son. Your salvation is not lost until the day you die. What I mean, if you're lost and you have never believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, you still can get saved to the day you die. Once you die, you can't get saved. I don't care what the Catholic Church teaches. Whomsoever I shall kiss, so the kiss is a sign. You don't see that in the Pentecostal church, the sign of the kiss. You know, we talk in tongues. You know what's funny? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But today's church, we're not going to do it. Paul closed a Jewish man. Paul closes some of his letters, give him a, give him a brotherly kiss. But we're not going to do that in this church. The same as he hold him fast. That's him. Don't let him go. And forthwith he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. Well, it's not what Mark said. Well, I mean, you've got this in different point of view. If there's a traffic accident and there's 10 people, that police officer is going to get 10 different stories. I know because when I used to drive for a tow truck and I was a dispatcher, but when I drove for a tow truck, they say, you know, so I go to Bank Street, got a blue car. 
Okay. And you pull up, you're looking around, and it's a red card. They don't even know what color their card. People don't even know what their house number. And Jesus said unto him, friend, friend, your friend can betray you. Now, with that, take your Bibles to Psalm 41. Psalm 41, verse 9. And this is about Jesus. Yea, my own familiar friend, in whom I trusted, he held the bag, which did eat of my bread, has lifted his heel against me. There's Judas. According to the scriptures, there it is. Why did Jesus call him friend? Because they were friends, and the Bible says in the Old Testament, my familiar friend. I don't know. I don't go check. But what if the modern Bible changes those words? You lost the cost reference. When I did the search to look for this verse, I did Old Testament friend. I don't know. If I had a modern Bible, I might not have been find it. Go back to Matthew 26. He says, friend, wherefore art thou come? Now, Jesus is God. Don't you think he knows? What do you tell Adam? I, I can't call it verbatim, but where are you, Adam? What'd you do, Adam? What do you say to Cain verbatim? I can't, but, you know, where's your brother? <laughs> You know what he wants? You know, from, from Genesis chapter 2, do you know what Jesus wants? He wants his friend, Judas, to get down on his knees and say, Lord God, forgive me. I have, here's a 30 pieces of silver. Now, we'll see Judas does wrong. But what if Judas gave Jesus 30 pieces of silver and said, the, the Father's will be done that you be betrayed and go to the cross, but I don't want to be charged. Wait till later with Judas. Then, he, then came they, laid hands on Jesus, and took him. And behold, one of them which were with Jesus, a disciple, Stretched out his hand and drew his sword. All right, his sword. Got more information. Mark says, a sword. You see why you got to read it all together? And struck the servant of the high priest. Oh, oh. we learned more. That guy that lost his ear was a servant of the high priest. Peter's in trouble. We know it's Peter. He's told you it's Peter. And smoke off his ear. Then said Jesus unto him, Put again thy sword into its place. Here's a great verse for gun lovers. For all they that take up the sword shall perish by the sword. Opportunity to bang, bang, bang with a sword. And one of his disciples does it against the scriptures. And the disciple, the follower of Jesus, gets the rebuke, not the men. 
And they're the one with the weapons. Maybe God wanted men to show us with the weapons. Maybe God wanted to test your faith. May you keep opening up your big mouth and bragging about how great you are, what a great church you are. How much God loves us, how much we love God. I have a guy come with a gun and let's see how much faith you got. You know, there's a ministry out there. We can teach you how to use your guns and, and uh, everything, the security of your church. I know one church, they have men who are not there listening to them preaching, but they're out in the grounds walking around with their guns. But you can't say nothing about their BBS. Thing is, Al, that I cannot pray to the Father. All right, what about your weapons? What kind of protection he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels? That's a pretty amount. That's a pretty amount of angels. God can take care of you. Everyone talks about we got these guardian angels. But we got to trust our guardian gun. We got to trust our guardian uh, security service. We got to trust our guardian anything but the faith in God. That's 72,000 minimum men. I think with 72,000 Minimum angel. I think the earth would be totally wiped out because there was one angel, the angel of the Lord, that wiped out three quarters of a military overnight. You know, I've heard preachers, oh, we're going to go into hell with our water guns, spurt, 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 old smutty face. That church ain't much today. But how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled that thus it must be? What if you take your gun and use your gun and you take a lost man and you kill him and he goes off into eternity? Where? You just put a man in hell. And if God's unable to protect you, Christian, well, you'll die and go to heaven. In the same hour, Jesus said to the multitudes, Are you come out against a thief with swords and staves to take me? I sat daily with you teaching in a temple, yet laid no hand on me, hold on me. But all this was done that the scriptures might, the scriptures of the prophets, Old Testament, might be fulfilled. So look in the scriptures, read the scriptures. One of them is Zechariah. Then all the disciples forsook him. Wait a minute, Peter. Wait a minute, Peter. Don't all forsake you, Lord. I won't. Where'd you go, Peter? Peter. Oh, Peter. I'll die with you. Peter. Peter, Peter. Where are you? I'm going to go back. Look at the other references. So Luke 22. You know I can't stand in churches? I'm going to say it while we go there. I can't stand a preacher that's going to say, all right, we got a lot of scriptures to look at. Well, you can just write them down and look them up later. They're not going to look them up later, and they're not going to write them down. I am going to try to follow you as best as I can, because I think maybe you're trying to, maybe you can slip another verse in there on me. 
I'm very literally a preacher. To me, most of them rank up there with the politicians and used car salesmen. And I've known a couple of preachers who were used car salesmen. Luke 22, 47, while yet he spake, behold the multitude. And he that was called Judas, one of the twelve, and we know who that is, went before them, drew nigh unto Jesus and kissed them. But Jesus said unto him, now listen, this is awful. Luke was not there. Luke gets it from the from the disciples and from the Holy Spirit. Remember, Luke chapter one, he's right into the Theonopolis. I believe that was his name. Judas betrays thou the Son of Man with a kiss. And they which were about him saw that would follow. The disciples. They said unto him, Lord, shall we smite with the sword? So now we get the disciples, Lord, can we can we get our swords? Do we get up and fight? One of them smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. So somebody jumped into battle. Because somebody said, Oh, we'll fight. We'll die with you. We'll never deny you. Do you see what Peter's done? If they had their way and joined in Peter, I'm realizing, and they all said, yeah, did what Peter said, they would all have ruined the Old Testament scriptures. Oh, I wish the rapture happened. Maybe in your activities, maybe you ruined the rapture and you moved it away a little further. And Jesus answered and said, Suffer ye this far. And touched his ear and he healed them. And everybody's wondering, did he pick it up? Did he, uh, why do you nitpick at the small things. And just forget the fact is it said that he cut off his ear and whatever happened, Jesus healed. What about that thing? Then Jesus sent to the chief priest captains of the temple. So these are the military people, the protection of the temple. Soldiers. And the elders, which were come to him, be be ye come now, be ye come out as a against a thief. Well, that's three times that thief. The Lord comes as a thief in the night. Did you get that? With swords and staves. You see, when he comes for the Christian. Even the people of the world are not going to know. The Christians are not even going to know. One day, those that are alive are going to be walking, sleeping, sitting, and boom, we're in the clouds. When I was daily with you in the temple, he stretched forth no hands against me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. And this hour and this darkness is they're going to crucify God's son. The scriptures are going to be fulfilled, but so John chapter 18. John chapter 18, verse 3. Judas then well, verse 2, and Judas also, which betrayed him, the money's already been paid, knew the place, Gethsemane, for Jesus oftentimes resorted, resort. You know, people go on a trip, they go to their resort. We're going to go to the resort on the bay, the resort. And that came out of the King James 1611 Bible. 
I wonder what your modern Bible said. With the disciples. Judas then having received a band of men. And officers from the chief priests and Pharisees. Coming thither with lanterns and torches. It's dark. It's the middle of the night. Before electricity. I've been places where there's no electricity. And it's dark. I remember after 9-11. And when there was no air traffic. And. Man, it was quiet. I've been out in the road in the middle of the night where the power's been out. And you look, it's quiet. It's also dark. And you get children, they get that flashlight, and they put it up in their face. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto him, Whom seek ye? He knew. They answered. Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said unto him. I am. There you go Moses. Moses says to Jehovah. What's your name? God says I am that I am. Jesus said. I am. He. Another place in the gospel of John. He says, I am. And they pick up stones to cast him. Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with him. And as soon as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. That's a sign. The kiss and falling over backwards. You know they do that in some charismatic churches? You ever see them getting that holy weirdo dancing? I saw a video like that the other day. They start shaking. They start freaking. They start. That's the result of testifying against Jesus. That ain't holiness. Then asked he again, who seek ye? They said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If therefore ye seek me, let these go their way. That the same might be fulfilled which he spoke of them which thou gavest me, have I lost none. That's scripture. That's fulfilled scripture there. Then Simon Peter, ding dong, here we go, having a sword. Peter had a sword. Drew it, smote the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. So when Jesus had to touch the ear, it wasn't on the head. It was on the ground. Now, the servant's name is Malchus. I may be saying that wrong. And he tells Peter to put up the sword. But you see that man's name, Malchus? Go back to Mark. Mark chapter 14. And I've heard this in churches, and I've heard this in men. Mark 14. Verse 51. Now we read all four Gospels, didn't we? We learned eventually it was Peter, didn't we? We learned that it was a servant of the high priest's ear, didn't we? We learned all four Gospels. Now watch this. Verse 51. They all forsook him and fled. All 11 disciples are now gone. And there followed him a certain young man, having a linen cloth clasped about his naked body. And the young man laid hold on him. He left his linen cloth, fled from them naked. 
Didn't we learn the name of the high of the of the ear that Peter chopped off? Didn't we learn the name of the one who chopped off the ear? There are preachers out there. There are men scholarly. They will tell you they know who this man is. Yet the Holy Spirit does not tell you the name. And they'll go back into their philosophy. They will go back in their theology. And they'll go back in the numbskullness of their heads. And say that this man's name. We know the name Malchus. No one tells us the man's name. It can't be one of the disciples. It can't be Mark himself. All of them, because they'll say it's Mark. They all forsook him. It's that plain and simple. 